Hey, good morning, good morning, shalom. My name is Damian Powell from YeshuaSavesAll.com. How you doing this morning? What's your name, by the way? Again, I'm uh, Damian Powell from YeshuaSavesAll.com. Yeshua is the Hebrew name of the one the world calls Jesus. His name means salvation in Hebrew. So uh, thank you all for joining in. Um, the world calls our father God, but I call him Yahweh, just so anybody won't be confused when I'm speaking. Yahweh is the name of our father in heaven, and Yeshua is his son in Hebrew. So what I wanted to do, which I do regularly, is I want to uplift the body of Messiah, Yeshua, and to tell the world, you know, the things that we do as far as worship without knowing what we're doing. You know, Satan has devised a plan to get us to worship him indirectly because he knows that the world won't bow down to him. So what he does is he devises schemes, he devises methods to get us to worship him indirectly. And he does this by getting us to do uh, pagan rituals and pagan holidays and things of that nature. Now, our father Yahweh, he gives us appointed times and he calls them Shabbats. He calls them Shabbats, like our weekly seventh day Sabbath. It's called a Shabbat from Friday night sunset to Saturday night sunset is the, is the Shabbat. And he also calls his appointed times like Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, Pentecost, Feast of Tabernacles, uh, Day of Atonement. He calls those Shabbats as well. We know that Satan is the master of lies, the father of lies, and he's the master counterfeiter. So what he does is he comes up with his own to try to mock our father Yahweh. And he calls his pagan days Sabbaths. S-A-B-B-A-T-S instead of Shabbat. So when we partake in holidays and things of that nature that are not found in the Bible, then we are partaking in Satan's Sabbaths and not Yahweh's Shabbats. So with my ministry, my plan, and my goal that he has shown me is to get people to get back to worshiping as we did in ancient Israel, as our ancestors should have been doing. And the reason why they got exiled because they worshiped pagan deities and Yahweh, it, it, it provoked Yahweh to anger and he had to exile them and punish them. So Yeshua said that the path is narrow and I want to keep us on the narrow path and have us walk with the Messiah in truth. And we can learn together because iron sharpens iron. So, the latest one is one that's coming up is Valentine's Day. So we have men and women all over the world. They're going out of their way to purchase roses, candy, cards, and other gifts to show their significant others how much they love them. The world spends an estimated $18.2 billion dollars. The world spends $18.2 billion on Valentine's Day. But what are the origins behind Valentine's Day? Why do we need the world to tell us when to love our significant others? We're supposed to love them any day, right? The same way as the world tells us um, a set-aside day for Father's Day and Mother's Day, which are also pagan days, by the way, so... You're supposed to honor your mom and your dad, as Yahweh said in the Ten Commandments, so that you will live long in the land and all will be well with you. So while we're setting aside one particular day to honor our parents, we should honor them 365 days. Same way it is with Valentine's Day. Why does somebody have to tell you when to love your significant other? Anyway, Satan has again conditioned the world to sin against Yahweh and his son Yeshua. OK, unmarried people, unmarried couples are engaging in fornication. Others are committing adultery. And the main focus of this blog is the fact that Satan has the world recreating pagan rituals and worshiping pagan deities. And that's going to be the focus of this blog today. Now, as I always like to say, 
Revelations 12, 9 says Satan was cast out and he wants to wait. He, he's deceived the whole world. Satan has come down and he wants to deceive the whole world and he's doing just that. And a lot of us believers are following blindly in tradition, not knowing what it is that we do. But indirectly, it's, it's worshiping Satan, and we ought to get away from that. So anyway, Yahweh tells us in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2, Do not learn the way of the Gentiles, the heathen. Yet the world passes Valentine's Day off as a Christian holiday when it is found nowhere in Scripture. We have done exactly what Yahweh said do not do, which is learn the way of the Gentiles with pagan customs. By attempting to Christianize a pagan day known as Lupercalia, Valentine's Day is no different than Halloween or Xmas. Lupercalia is a Roman holiday, a festival that was performed between February 13th and February 15th. They performed the festival to expel spirits and purify the city and to release fertility and health. It was an ancient Roman celebration in honor of Lupercus, a.k.a. Faunus, who was the deity of fertility. Faunus was a Roman deity of flocks and shepherds and had the head and torso of a man but the hindquarters of a goat. Lupercaria celebrated the coming of spring with orgies, sex with minors, fornication, rape, and drunkenness. Wow. So, as you can see, Rome has done it again. All the names of the months on our, um, our Gregorian calendar that we go by are pagan names, pagan gods. Every day of the week, are pagan guys and most of the celebrations. So Valentine's Day is a cover up for Lupercalia, the celebration of a pagan guy named Lupercus, aka Faunus. So what I'm going to do is show you a picture real quick of what he looks like. You can see right here, Faunus. This is the pagan god, pagan deity that's being worshipped on Valentine's Day. Faunus. A.K.A. Lupercus. As you can see, he's naked and he's exposed because he represents uh, fertility. And what people did was they fornicated um had, had sex uh well same thing as fornication but anyway rape drunkenness and all this was to celebrate this guy right here on so-called valentine's day but it was called lupercalia okay Let me show you something else real quick this is this is the festival right here Pagan love festival, sex orgies, fornication, adultery, rape, lust, sex with minors, drunkenness. And you also have the fertility goddess, which I'll show you a little later on, and homosexuality. So again, the world has been deceived into thinking that it is one thing when in actuality it's a whole nother thing. It's an abomination to Yahweh. So Lupercalia is a Roman holiday, a festival that was performed between February 13th and 15th. They performed this festival to expel spirits and to, pur to purify the city. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> so, oh, uh, Yahweh says, be fruitful and multiply, but be fruitful and multiply with your wife. Okay, so Satan wants to do the exact opposite of what Yahweh tells you to do. 
Yahweh says be fruitful and multiply with your wife, but Satan is saying do with anybody. Just go out there and just have these these orgies and homosexuality and, and, and all of this good stuff and have sex with minors and rape and get drunk was the exact opposite of what, what Yahweh wants you to do. So he is getting you to sin, having sex outside of wedlock. And we know that a lot of people, married couples, will, you know, find a way to, 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 to sleep with someone else sometimes when they have a crush on somebody and say, oh, you know, what, what they don't know won't hurt them, man. I mean, that, that's satanic. You know, Yahweh sees everything you're doing. Yeshua sees everything that you're doing. But on Valentine's Day, people, it gives people, they feel like it gives them a right or an opening to do whatever it is that they want to do. But he's getting us to sin. All right. So Lupercalia is the Roman form of a worship of the Greek deity called Pan. Excuse me. And I'm not sure if anybody's ever heard of uh, pantheism. Excuse me. But that's the uh, the worship of nature. When people worship the sun, worship the moon, they worship the stars and all that. It's called pantheism. Okay. And it all stems back to a pagan deity named Pan. And Pan can be traced back to Baal, who is the pagan deity of the Canaanites, who the uh, the Bible mentions more than any other pagan deity who the Israelites worship to provoke Yahweh to anger. Baal or Baal is the original lubricus known as Nimrod, the one who was found in Genesis chapter 10 verse 8, who rebelled against Yahweh at the Tower of Babel. So there's just other names for Nimrod who is Baal the sun deity, the sun Elohim, the sun God, okay? And it's the horn, the horn God. This is the, this is the pagan deity who the children of Israel would sacrifice their sons and daughters to for financial gain, a.k.a. Moloch. He has many different names, but standing behind all of these pagan deities is Satan. Okay, Faunus, that statue that I just showed you, which is for sale on Amazon, which is crazy. I don't know why anybody would buy this. Maybe they don't know what it is that they're buying. But anyway, this Faunus was considered a symbol of uh, fecundity, which means the ability to produce an abundance of offspring or new growth. Uh, you're welcome. No problem at all. I'm just glad I can help you. And thank you for joining in, by the way. Yeshua Saves All is the, the website. <laughs> yeah. Genesis chapter, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2 through 5 is real. And we, we all have learned the way of the heathen, but we must unlearn it, which is, which is my goal. Is to get us to unlearn all of this stuff so we can worship our Messiah in truth and go and walk through that narrow path and not the broad path that leads to destruction. Um, but anyway, faunus have the ability to produce an abundance of offspring or new growth, fertility because of his lustful nature. Now look at that. That statue that I showed you represents him of sex and fertility and his lustful nature. Now think about that. That is another sin. You see what Satan has done? Yeshua says that surely if anyone lusts after a woman in his own heart, he's already committed adultery. Right? Well, thank you for joining in and listening. Um, maybe one day uh, Yeshua will open up your heart and maybe you will see that he is the Messiah. But thanks for joining in and, um, and seeing, seeing if we can... Get you to, uh, to learn something new or different. But all of this is real. All I can tell you is it's real. Even though uh, you say you're an atheist, Yeshua still believes in you. And he wants you to turn to him. He wants you to turn to him. He wants the world to turn to him. Because he says that it's his will that no one should perish. So whether you believe in him or not, he believes in you. And he wants us all to come to him. But this pagan deity 
He has the ability to produce offspring because of his lustful nature. Now, Yeshua says that anyone who could uh, lust after a woman in, own, in their own heart has already committed adultery. But this pagan deity, Faunus, a.k.a. Pan, a.k.a. Baal, wants us to lust. They want us to lust. And we look at these women and we're like, oh, man, I, you know, I, I want to fornicate with her. That's a sin. But that's what they want us to do on the so-called Valentine's Day, which is a cover up for this, for Luper Kelly. you. Now we know why everybody wants to lust, make love and fornicate on this day because it represents sex and fertility. Luper Kelly was held on February 15th, which was called the Feast of Lupercus. Lupercus was the fertility deity the Romans worshipped. They sacrificed goats and dogs on this day. Then the blood was smeared on the foreheads of the young men. And the blood was wiped off with wool dipped in milk. Then the men wearing strips of goat skin around the loins ran around the city striking women with the goat skin. It was believed that pregnant women would have easier labor and infertile, infertile women would become more fertile. Lupercus had priests called Lupercy, which is similar to the 450 prophets of Baal and his priests that is found in 1 Kings chapter 18. If you go to 1 Kings chapter 18, you'll see that Elijah Eliyahu in Hebrew, he was having a showdown with the uh, 450 prophets of uh, Baal and Asherah, where uh, Yahweh says, I won't make it rain until, you know, your command after three, after three years. And the prophets of Baal were cutting themselves. They were crying out the bell, but now Baal Never could make it rain because he's a pagan deity. He's nothing. So Elijah called upon ba um, Elijah called upon Yahweh. The fire came down and consumed the sacrifice that he had, and then it rained. So the prophets of Baal failed. Even though it was 450 of them, they couldn't make it rain and devour the sacrifice that they put down for Baal. But Yahweh showed them who the true Elohim of Israel was. But yet there was 450 prophets of the false deity Baal and his priests. So the, the, uh, these fake Valentine pagan deities had their own priests called Lupercy for their pagan deity Lupercus. You see how Satan works? He wants to counterfeit, mock everything that Yahweh does. But he fails. He fails. And like I said, this is found in 1 Kings chapter 18, that showdown between Elijah and his Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Uh, it's interesting also that the goats being used, the goats being used for the uh, the skin that the, the the young men were using to hit the women with, is a representation of what the Baphomet is. I'm not sure if anybody knows what a Baphomet is, but it's a demon that has a goat head with a pentagram on it and fe female breasts. This is the same statue that was used um, that they put up next to the Ten Commandments in Arkansas. Now, let me see if I can pull this up and show you what a Baphomet is. A representation of a demon. Bear with me one minute. It's pretty disgusting. All right, here we go. This is a Baphomet. Now, in Arkansas, they had a statue of the Ten Commandments up there. And the Satanist said, well, if you can have your uh, Ten Commandments statue up there, then surely we can put <clears throat> our demonic statue up there next to yours. So this is what they, this is what the Baphomet looks like. And as you see on the top, it's a horned deity. Okay, it's a horn up there. This representation of Satan, like I said, the uh, Moloch has horns. Uh, what's the other one? 
I'm trying to think of the other one right now. I'm drawing a blank. But yeah, it's a horn. Yeah, Pan. Pan has horns on his head. Lubricus and all of them have horns. As you can see, the Baphomet has it too. And on the top is a pentagram. And the statue that's in uh, Arkansas actually has children around it. I'm going to see if I can. It's a representation of Satan, but it has a goat, it has a goat head. And like I said, on uh, Lupercalia, they run around with goat skins and they sacrifice a goat to Lupercus. So it's like a connection of this goat for whatever reason. And the, and the goat head is on a bath in it. Let me see if I can find it. In Arkansas. Bear with me one minute. All right, here we go. This is the statue that's in Arkansas. And look at the goat head, the horns, the pentagram, and then you see the children. You see children right beside the bathroom, man. That represents pedophilia, pedophiles, and because Satan requires sex with children, sacrifice of children in order for power, which is really disgusting. And they're representing that right there by having the children standing next to the bathroom. So, like I said, on Lupercalia, the cover up of Valentine's Day. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. That's what Valentine's Day and all that represents. They had sex with minors and rape and everything on Lupercalia, which is a cover up for Valentine's Day. Okay, and they sacrificed goats and took the goat skin and started whipping the women with it because they said it would make them more fertile and that women who were uh, given birth would have easier labor. And this bathroom, which is the demonic statue, has a goat head on it. And as you see in the back, it has a pentagram with children around it. No, it's not about, they want you to think it's about cars and chocolate, but everything has an origin behind it. And uh, believers in Yeshua, we are here to expose the lies that we have been taught the same way that we have been taught that Columbus discovered America. And we know that's not true. People feed us lies every day. But we have to unlearn the lies and dig for the truth. Okay, so just want to show you the significance of that right there. This is real. While, while we are busy watching sports and being entertained with reality TV, they're building a bathroom and statue in Arkansas, and they're telling us lies about what these days represent. You see what I'm saying? We've been deceived, and Satan has come to deceive the whole world. I don't want anybody to be to see you. We're going to speak the truth. Okay. All right. So Lupercalia was the festival for Lupercus. And later, it's in Arkansas. Lupercalia was the festival for Lupercus. And later in the day, the Feast of Juno, February day, was celebrated where women would be paired with men by lottery. Now, check this out. So Lupercalia was was the festival for Lupercus. And later on in the day, there would be a feast for one called Juno, where it celebrated women who would be paired with men by a lottery. Wow. Juno was the Roman goddess fever of love, marriage, and women. Her day also fell on February 15th. And on this day, young women wrote their names on a billet which are slips of paper, and then they put them into a large bowl. Then single men would draw the names out of the billet. The ladies, the lady whose name was on the billet would be his partner for erotic festivals for the rest of the day. So there's fornication again. So after the woman would write her name down and put it in the bowl, a single man would come and pick her name out and say, okay, uh, Lucy. So he and Lucy would be together for the rest of the day. They're not married. And they would enjoy an erotic fest festivals for the rest of the day. So now we know where we get secret Valentines from. Where people will draw names from a bowl and get a gift for their secret crush, right? 
And today is just more modernized because people can draw names online for their secret valentines and send anonymous messages and draw names online to find the perfect gift for your secret cupid. Wow. Also, the expected uh, the couples are expected to have sex and erotic pleasures on this day. Think about it. Think about it. It's like sex is is expected on Valentine's Day, whether you're married or not. Say, hey, are you going to get lucky today? <laughs> it's an abomination. It's an abomination. You are supposed to be married before you have sex, but yet fornication is accepted on this pagan day. Now we see why. We see the origin behind it because of this pagan deity, Lupercus, Pan, Baal, and now Juno, who was for the women of love, marriage, and women. You draw your name from the bowl. If your name was picked, you and I are gonna be together for the rest of the day and we're gonna we're gonna partake in erotic festivals. Me and you all day long. Secret Valentine's Day stems from that pay see all that's what I'm saying. All we're doing is recreating pagan rituals. That's all we are doing. We recreate pagan rituals and pass it off as something that's okay. Now I'm gonna show you what Juno looks like. This is Juno. The one for women, love, fever, sex, fertility. It looked like we got a uh, Look like falling us right there on the right hand side, grabbing on to Juno. And of course, we got little baby Cupid up there, another pagan deity flying up there at the top. And look at them, they're all naked because that's what they want. They want you to lust, have sex, be fertile, get drunk, all in the name of Valentine's Day, stemming from a pagan festival called Lupercalia. It's my prayer now that people's eyes are starting to be open, us believers' eyes are starting to be open to the lie that we've been taught over the years. Uh, so, we have that. Then we have two men named Valentine who were killed on Valentine's Day. And there was one named St. Valentine who married couples in private. So, the man would avoid being drafted uh, by going into the army. But he was beheaded on February 14, 2000. I mean, February 14, 269 AD. This, it reminds me of two people that were killed on birthdays by two evil men in the Bible. Pharaoh killed the chief baker and King Herod killed John the Baptist on their birthdays. So, on Valentine's Day, two men named Valentine were killed. And then on birthdays, two righteous men, well, two people were killed on their birthdays, and John the Baptist was a righteous man. But um, I'll be doing a blog or a video on, on birthdays later on about how birthdays are evil as well. But that's not my intent here today. Uh, when Rome accepted Christianity, the Roman Catholic Church did not like the open erotic behavior of Lupercalia. So Pope Galatius honored February 14th as the honor of Valentinus, a saint martyr instead of Lupercus. Okay, do you see, do you see the manipulation and deception there? All he did was merge paganism with Christianity and disguised it with a new name to make it more acceptable to the masses. So he didn't like the open erotic behavior and disguised Lupercalia by making it to be for a day for St. Valentine. He made it for the, the martyr of all the saints and just disguised it so Christianity would accept it when Rome accepted Christianity. And to get rid of Juno, that feast of Juno that I told, told you about where women would draw a well, man would draw a name from a, a bowl with the woman's name on it and have sex and just fornicate do all types of abominations to get rid of that day of juno pope galatius changed that day from february 15th to february 14th and he called it saint valentine's day it was then associated with various martyrs by the name of valentine again covering up pagan roots behind 
all behind the name of Christianity and the world has fallen prey. The world isn't honoring any saints, but worshiping pagan de deities of fertility. Red roses, which are so popular on Valentine's Day, was the favorite flower of the pagan deity Venus, the mother of Cupid. So again, we can see the connection as to why people buy their lovers roses on this day. Now, I'm not saying roses are evil. That's not what I'm saying. But that's the connection between roses being given to their significant others on this day because of a pagan deity who supposedly gave birth to Cupid. In conclusion... Valentine's Day honors Lupercus, Juno, Pan, Venus, Aphrodite, Faunus. All of them represent love, lust, desire, and fertility. And, and standing behind all of these pagan deities is Satan to deceive us all. Just because we change the name of a pagan ritual doesn't change the fact that it's still a pagan ritual. All we are doing is recreating pagan rituals in modern times, and Yahweh hates it. It is my prayer, my plea, that we all stand up and fight for the Elohim of Israel in truth and learn these lies and pagan rituals that have been passed down to us. Yes, Yeshua. Yeshua was everything. He died for each and every one of us, and he just wants to turn to him in truth. Remember, he says, he says, narrow is the path that leads to, to life, but broad is the path that leads to destruction. Okay, and he said, many will, go, many will go into it. So we have to unlearn these pagan deities, these, these, these lies that we've been taught. How should the fight proceed as far as as far as what um, we have to learn, because he says, do not learn the way of the heathen, yet we have learned it, okay? And Yeshua tells us in Matthew 7, 21, that people are going to be coming to him during the end time saying, Master, Master, we cast out demons in your name. We did many good works in your name, and we prophesied in your name. And he's going to say, away from me, I never knew you. Away from me, I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. These are believers that he's talking to. These are people that profess Yeshua as their Messiah and Savior, as the Son of Yahweh. And he's going to say, away from me, I never knew you. Because we have sinned against him. We have taken on learning the way of the heathen. We have taken on pagan rituals and passed them off for Christianity. And he does not accept those. He does not accept them as worship of him because it has nothing to do with him. It has everything to do with worship of Satan. So in that day, he's going to say, away from me, I never knew you. Revelations 12, 17 says, Satan only wants to wage war on those who keep the commandments of Yahweh and believe and have the testimony in his son Yeshua. That's it. So we're not doing these things. Satan is saying, you already belong to me. So we have to unlearn all of this and be holy as he is holy, as he says in Leviticus 19, verse 2. And we cannot be holy if we are taking on pagan rituals and worshiping pagan deities and recreating pagan customs and, customs and rituals. There's no way. It said, Paul says, you cannot sip the cup of Yahweh and the cup of demons. In other words, you cannot be lukewarm. You have to be hot when you serve Yeshua. Or cold, because he says he will spit, he will spit the lukewarm Christian out. So if you are, if you are following Yeshua and keeping his commandments, because he says if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and not loving the world, then you have a chance. Then we all have a chance, because he died for you. Live not for yourself, but live for the one who died for you. You're no longer you anymore. Um, prayer answers your question. If I didn't, you can ask me again. Um, if I didn't make it uh, make it clear. Um, 
But I have my website, YeshuaSavesAll.com. I do uh, free blogs. Uh, I have a free book that you can download on there. It's a free PDF where I can mail it to you. Um, whichever one is comfortable for you. But I do this and I do it for free because I want us all to stand together to worship our Messiah in truth and not to be deceived by Satan. It's, um, it's a narrow path and there's a lot of lies that we have been taught. There's a lot of lies that we have been taught and we have to stand up and fight for him and to do as he says. If it's not in the Bible, please don't celebrate it. Do not celebrate it and go and tell anybody what you've learned here today. Yes. A lot of, this, I'm telling you, a lot of things that, that, that people celebrate that they try to Christianize, for example, like uh, Xmas and Thanksgiving and Easter, they're all worship of, of, of Satan in the end. And like I said, a lot of people have been deceived. A lot of people have been deceived and we pass it off as Christianity. But behind it, behind it is, is a dark, pagan, satanic ritual. And people don't know that human sacrifices even occur. They occur on these days. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to innocently think that you know it's about candies candy gifts and roses but behind it is sex drunkenness rape child sacrifices uh pedophilia you know is whether they know it or not that's exactly what they're celebrating that's exactly what they're celebrating now that's that's what i mean uh, by satan coming to deceive the whole world if you put up a christmas tree you're saying well I'm doing it for the birth of the Messiah. Well, guess what? Yeshua wasn't born on December 25th. The Xmas tree is, an, uh, is a representation of a pagan deity named Nimrod. You see what I'm saying? Tammuz, Nimrod reincarnated. Yeah, people think that's what Thanksgiving is about. But Thanksgiving is a celebration of the harvest deity for the harvest of, um, uh, what is it? The Kern, the Kern doll. Look up the current baby. It's a it's a doll. No, it's a big like thirty foot um, doll that they fashion out of uh, corn and wheat, and it's supposed to scare off all the uh, all the spirits. And they they do human sacrifices to this current this current baby. And then you have Sarais, you have um, what is it uh, Diana and all those pagan deities who they sacrifice to for the harvest the harvest deities. The real Thanksgiving, the real Thanksgiving is found in the Bible. It's called the Feast of Tabernacles. That's the true Thanksgiving to Yahweh when you are to gather in your harvest and your produce. The Feast of Then Gathering, that's the true Thanksgiving. November 25th is a pagan satanic knockoff. And not only that, innocent Indians were murdered on that day. Okay? The, the uh, Columbus and all his Puritans, they came in and they killed innocent Indians on that day. Okay, and after they slaughtered them, they had a Thanksgiving meal to their God, whoever that would be. And it would not be Yahweh because he didn't approve of that. And then they took them and threw them into uh, reservation camps. OK, so the Indians mourn on Thanksgiving Day. So when you sit down and have that Thanksgiving meal, you were saying thank you for slaughtering Indians. Yahweh does not approve of that. This will be equivalent to people having a meal on for Holocaust, for the, the slaughter of six million Jews who were thrown in concentration camps like the Indians are thrown in the reservation camps. Yahweh doesn't approve of any of this. And nowhere in the Bible does it say to keep that thanksgiving day the true thanksgiving is found in leviticus chapter 23 it's called the feast of tabernacles we do not need two thanksgivings but again the world has been deceived the world wants us and satan wants us to celebrate things that are not in the bible and to sin against yahweh so if you are celebrating thanksgiving they want you to think it's about turkey, and they want you to make you think it's about football. But behind it, 
It's about the celebration of pagan deities to their harvest festivals. Okay, and like I said, you have them that they sacrifice, uh, human sacrifices to, because they think that their harvest, their harvest gods were the ones that brought in the, the, the festival and the harvest throughout the entire year, and that's a lie. And then innocent Indians were slaughtered on that day. So the Indians mourn on that day and we're sitting down having a meal over it. It's a true abomination. The same thing has happened for Valentine's Day. Fornication, sex, fertility, uh, fertility, adultery, the worship of pagan deities is the same thing that's happening on Valentine's Day. And it's been passed off as a day of love and candy. And it's another pagan festival. So... Like I said, I pray that uh that has reached some people today and that some eyes are open. And I would like you to be able to share this with some people who who don't know, so that we can worship our Messiah in truth. Um again, my name is Damian Powell and my website is Yeshua. Yeshua saves all dot com. You can subscribe for free. You can email me. Uh whatever the case may be, so we can continue to stand with the Messiah in truth. Um, that's all that I have for the day. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I pray that you all have uh, a great rest of the day. And do not celebrate this Valentine's coming up. Knowing what you know. Thank you. Bye.